All right, guys, Tacoma Comics here, and I'm just trying to catch up and uh, get things put away and get business taken care of. This is the business I'm referring to. All of these are from recent hauls and Comic-Con and stuff that needs to be bagged. I finally got some new bags and boards, so lots of stuff going on. Um, I'm behind on Pick of the Week. I made it through the first eight on time. But then I fell behind, so I'm going to do Pick of the Week 9, which is for two Wednesdays ago. Uh, I didn't go to my LCS last Wednesday, so when I go this Wednesday, I'll have Pick of the Week 10 and 11 to do um, later this week. But uh, last week was just crazy with um, soccer season uh, ending, having end-of-year parties and three games in four days, and then Emerald City Comic Con right after that. It was a little crazy, so I haven't been to the LCS for a while. But I, I do plan on getting there soon, in two days, um, and getting some stuff. So yeah, let me just go through little bits and pieces I have here. Um, spent a dollar, one dollar on comics today. That's the cheapest I've ever done. A dollar in my pocket. Um, this is a great read. Um, I don't think this got enough attention when it came out. This is Star Wars Annual 2 by Kelly Thompson, um, Lysa and Rosenberg. Just a really great spy war story. Um, but one that I think was overlooked because it's not a key, um, but it's a really, really good story. Uh, I just picked up this Dr. Afric because I like the cover. Eventually I get the series, but I'm not paying full price for it. So uh, 250 cent comics. Woo! Right here, um, I'm so psyched. Nerd versus Fat um, had a con, I think it was a contest. Uh, or he, not a contest because I didn't do anything for it, but he, he just like chose some people randomly um, to give some comics to because they had uh, they were his subscribers or he's doing a random giveaway. I honestly missed it and I feel I feel bad for that um, for why I missed it. But uh, he just sent me a little AOK, -okay, which is pretty darn incredibly cool because you know that's what this community is all about is is getting stuff and supporting each other. So Savage Dragon number three. Battles Bedrock. I assume this is the dragon and this is Bedrock. Uh, that's pretty darn cool right there. Star Lord number two. Uh, very cool cover right there. So, man, I was really touched to get this because I, I wasn't expecting it. Um, I knew he's sending it, but like I wasn't expecting it originally. Um, I like this. I don't have this one. I got the Miss Marvel when they did this. Um, this series of variants, but I don't have all, Wolverine, all new Wolverine 25, um, and I wanted to get it, so I'm actually really psyched because I'm collecting that series. I'm pretty close to getting um, getting all of them, uh, but this is one that I definitely needed, so I'm pretty psyched to have that. And then uh, this one I've never heard of, so this is really cool. Jimmy Palmiotti. Can't go wrong with a little Jimmy Palmiotti. On the monolith, um, a behemoth stalks the DC universe. So the behemoth is named the monolith. Uh, number one issue from 2004. Again, very cool. And I collect notes, man. Anytime anybody sends me a uh, contest winning, an A-OK, -okay, whatever it is people send to me, um, I collect the notes. So I want you guys to know that um, your notes are noted. Uh, this one right here. It says, it's not much and it's late, but I really appreciate your support and patience. Happy hunting. And he signs it, Josh, and then Nerd versus Fat, because, you know, we always forget <laughs> people's real names. So, Josh, thanks a lot. Greatly appreciate that. Really cool of you. Um, these will get bagged and boarded and put away. I can't even open the box right now. Tacoma Comics is having issues. There we go. And so he also said he was really nervous about packing comics because this is the first set of comics that he shipped off um josh you did a fine job a good sturdy box and then two pieces of cardboard on either side of the comics four comics in the middle that that ain't going anywhere um that is that is good shipping so thank you to josh for that um let's see do i have oh this is something i just wanted opinion from the community about um because i i don't know what to think or what to do uh, I'm just want to make sure I'm doing it right. I'm not pushing anything. Uh, so by the way, I'm sorry. Sub up nerd, nerd versus fat. I'll put his uh, info into comics comments below. Um, so I, I, I bought this up today, and uh, it's just a Han. It's not not the Black Widow variant. This is a fried pie variant. 
right? And I don't know if you can see it here, but there's two um, there's two significant creases on the comic here, right across the middle. Uh, so I, I wrote the guy and I you know said, hey, look, I'm not trying to give you bad uh, bad feedback. Um, I'd like to resolve this. Can I get a refund? And I'll, I'll gladly send it back. And so he, uh, oh, it also didn't, it said it was going to be bagged and boarded, and it wasn't. So I was kind of ticked at that. It was bagged, but not boarded, which is kind of pointless. Um, I'll deal with that later. So, yeah, he, uh, you know, e e eBay wrote to me to say, hey, you've got your refund. Um, and, you know, expect a return shipping label. Well, the guy never sent me the return shipping label, and I've waited. So, like, I don't feel... Like, it's my job to pester him for it, right? It's his job to send me the return shipping label. I'm not going to pay for shipping. That's ridiculous. That was Mrs. Tacoma Comics. Um, so I just I just don't feel like that's my job, right? Let me know if, if you think I'm wrong. But I, I think that it's, it's incumbent upon the guy who made the mistake to fix the mistake. That's all. All right, let's talk about pick of the week. Here we go. Special effects. Pick of the week, number nine. We have... Paper Girls 26. Paper Girls 26. Wrap around cover. That's actually pretty cool. I kind of dig that. Um, with a uh, advertisement. First appearance of Little Bird. <gasps> Special comic. No. Um, this was a wacky issue. It's kind of all over the place. Uh, artwork from Cliff Chang is great as always. I like this little Halloween going group here. Uh, you got... Um, Walt from Breaking Bad, and you got a little clown it and a little Stranger Things. So just really mixing up the pop culture references, um, getting kind of meta on itself. So I'll tell you that the problem here is, I mean, there's some great stuff where uh, this girl ends up in, like, 1930s and, like, with a bunch of newsies, because, um, of course, this is all about newspaper delivery, uh, and she beats one of them up who's a bully, which is pretty cool. But uh, there's also just a whole bunch of stuff that I don't get. I've lost the thread. This was a great comic that then became confusing, that then got great again. And now because there was so much room or time between 25 and 26, it's gotten a bit confusing again. It was a fun issue to read, but I wasn't like, boom, blown away by it. Um, Jeff Lemire on his latest Black Hammer offshoot, Black Hammer 45, about a squadron of pilots and Something really bad happened. So one of them is, is much older now and living in, I guess, this world's version of Harlem. Um, it's really cool. He's living in, like, a, the last undeveloped um, building that hasn't gotten knocked down between these two massive skyscrapers. So make a little comment about gentrification there. And it's a good sort of war comic with a little bit of mystery. It's Jeff Lemire's style, which is really cool. And within, like, the world of this war there's of course killer robots how could there not be killer robots um but not much happened here and it's a little lackluster uh deadly class deadly class is back rick remender is done writing the tv show done promoting the tv show he's back writing the comic and i couldn't be happier um Saya wearing a germ shirt and go ahead germs uh punk rock till I die. Uh, the artwork on this is insane. Um, the story was cool. So basically, they're in a club where Saya's um, criminal family is partying. Um, Saya's crossed them and she's in the basement in a dungeon. And Quan, who was sent to King's Dominion kind of to spy on, um, on them, he's become their lackey and servant and they're beating him up here. And so... You know, they're just being boisterous and loud and obnoxious. And Sonya's in the basement, and um, Quan finally mans up, and over here he, he shoves, like, somebody who's watching him down basement stairs. He's going to go rescue Saya, right? And she's, like, near death because uh, she's been beaten and chained up, and so now it gets all dark. Really cool color palette choices, the way they go from this. Then they're back up into the club, and look at this page here, man. It just looks like you're dancing in a nightclub with all these like lights blaring and flickering. You kind of get this kinetic feel there. Uh, really cool and well done. Saya convinces Quan to help her escape, um, but she doesn't have her sword and she's near death. So she guilts Quan into going back for her sword. 
Quan dresses up as a female, I guess like bartender or something, goes grab the sword and runs out, and then a chase ensues, and you know, another great Wes Craig pet page here. Just uh, look how cool that is. This is some awesome, awesome sequential comic book artwork. Uh, everything about that is is just incredibly sick. Uh, really well done. And then, of course, they escape. And uh, what I love about this is at the end, there's this touching little thing um, with between Sai and Quan. Quan carries her into like a warehouse and he's like, or a freighter, and he's like, My family owns this freighter, they'll get you out safely. And she goes, What will you do? He goes, Back, go back to Hanoi, try to start over again, clean start. Do you think people can do that? And she says, Some people. And not you, buddy. So all is not forgiven. I kind of like that ending. It's not all peaches and cream. Bam. Da da da. Die number four. Gillen Hans and Clayton Cows. Um. So first of all, it's. I think Die is going to become like a saga where you overlook how incredible Fiona Staples' art is. Uh, do not overlook how incredible. Sorry. Stephanie Hahn's art is here. Look at this. I mean, this is just gorgeous, gorgeous muted brush strokes and blended colors. And the the group kind of takes a pause here. It's a bit more of character building. They end up in a pub, and um, that's such a classic D and D trope that they had to do it. But now they kind of get a little flashback scene into each character's uh, life. And um, you see kind of what's motivated some of them and what has uh, what they've been through as they were here. And this is a heck of a good issue. Um, really, really awesome. So not much happens. I mean, they're in the pub the whole time. Uh, and so it is just building up their characters by talking about the different stories. You know, so you get a lot more of this. Um, some flashback action, but not a lot of action. More people sitting around a table drinking beer. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and, you know, they're, they're building towards something. Not quite sure what it is. Uh, but then they all kind of um, leave. And what's to say at the end here? We did with Soul on our side. He could break the rules like the Grandmaster. But now that rules are entirely souls. And so one of them, I can't remember who this is, says, then we stop playing his game. We can't beat him in 20? Fine. Look at Glasstown. He's worked so hard on it. I'll bet it'll come to us if we destroy it. Now, just check out that artwork, right? So it's contrasted with Glasstown up here, which is where the pub was and where they're headed towards. And this is like a creation of souls in, in the world of Dai. And just, just, just look at her. Right, that artwork. She, I would not mess with her. Um, so again, this is an incredible issue in which not much happens, but it's still super well written. Really, like that for those of you who are wondering, um, Gillen told me that Die is going um, to be about half of Wick Div, so maybe about sixteen issues, fifteen issues, three five issue story arcs, somewhere around there. Um, right, Red Sonia. Um, Mark Russell's like just trying to show how much smarter she is than everybody else, and he's writing it really well. But it's um, it's just straightforward. It's like Conan. It's just it's just fun. There's battles. There's people who are pompous and think that they're important because they conquer it a lot, um, and and they're really not. Uh, and she just shows them up and undermines their pomposity by being smarter than them and using their arrogance against them, uh, and and it works out pretty darn well. So this is a bit more um, character building between Red Sony and her brother and the bad guy. I can't remember his name, but you just uh, you get um, a look at his kids, which is kind of funny because, of course, he treats his kids like dirt. Um, it's a fun issue. It, it, it definitely continues. It's just one that's fun. right? It's not like earth shattering. It's fun. Um, this is going to be a polarizing comic. I'm still down with it because... It's six issues. It tells a really good story. It uses um, Granny Goodness's uh, 
desire to prove herself in a world where the females are always given short shrift and kind of second status. Um, and then it uses the pride that the rest of the Furies have as a way to not believe Aureli um, when she says that she's just basically being raped and abused by um, this man, one of the, uh, what are they called? One of the new gods, like the, the male version of Furies. My brain is drawing a ridiculous blank. And so she's starting to do all the stuff that you hear about. She's saying she's sick. She's throwing up. She doesn't feel well. She can't go out and, and do it. And anytime she does that, the others think that she's being weak. Um, she's not being weak. She and one of the other Furies had killed a guy at the end of issue one and hit him. But the comet in which they buried him in the middle has appeared. And so it looks like they're going to find out. So it's a really good story. I, I You know, some people bizarrely or for whatever reason are like oh we don't need that in our comics like we don't need a really good story based in things that women have been telling us have been going on for the last couple hundred years in society it seems ridiculous to me it's it's a really good story it doesn't ruin the story it enhances it anybody who's got a problem with that you know we're not going to read the same comics what am i going to do jim zub in three issues of champions has done um what I think Mark Wade was trying to do, but wasn't able to do uh, over the previous 14 issues of the first run. Um, this reboot is is amazing. Really, really strong. Um, I'm still lost because there's now like three sets of champions teams and there's like 18 characters. So I don't know them all. But basically, two things are three things are happening here. Um, this chick, Karada, um, is her name, Kadara. Uh, this woman, Kadara, is released from somewhere, and she wants to kill Sam Alexander. I don't know the backstory. I didn't read whatever issue or whatever thing has that. There's also training going on, and within that training, people are messing up. People are doing well. People are getting bad. People are getting good. And um, Sam Alexander is brooding because he no longer has the Nova Corps power. And Miss Marvel, as the natural leader, is trying to get everybody together. Um, and leading Sam's brooding, but so is Miles, because Spidey killed, um, Spidey made a deal with Mephisto in the last issue to reverse time and, um, s save something, but by saving himself and his friends, he ended up killing another girl, which, of course, devastated him. Um, so then he uses one of the powers of one of the, um, characters named Pinpoint, uh, whose name is Koreshi. And Pinpoint helps um, helps Spidey go back to um, the place where it all happened, and he, he sees the grieving mother. But then Miss Marvel kind of finds Pinpoint. And Pinpoint's like, oh, "I missed practice because, um, well, I don't like the punching, and I don't want to tell you what happened." Eventually, he tells her, and she finds Miles. Before all that happens, though, we are reintroduced to Dust. Um, who I think is technically the first Muslim uh, superhero in the Marvel Universe. Uh, and there's a little anti-mutant thing going on, and she's trying to protect some stuff. And the rest of the champions arrive, and they're called the Young Avengers. And Jim Zub loves doing little playful takes like that. Um, and the crowd's like, arrest that beauty, arrest the mutants. And um, the vision's like, we're the champions. And they confront Dust, and then they realize Dust was just trying to, um, you know, defend herself. And so... Before anything can happen, oh, it's Caldera, sorry. Caldera comes back and she's like, Sam, I'm going to kill you. But then the touching point here is where Miles um, ends up finding <laughs> finding the, the mother of the girl that he kills. This is one of the villagers, and he calls him Second Spider. He says that that's how your name is being translated here. Um, and Miles confronts the mother, and the mother is grieving, and the mother says... You know, it's it's not your fault. It's it's as God God wills it. Um, my daughter's death was God's will, and that's no comfort to Miles because he knows better. He knows that the daughter died instead of him and Miss Marvel. Um, I think it was Miss Marvel and Hulk that were going to die. I can't remember exactly. Um, but then you know, Miss Marvel gets I don't know what pinpoints powers exactly. He can locate sort of like Nightcrawler, I guess. I I haven't really studied it enough. Um, and then there's this really touching scene. This is, you know, to me, this is superhero comics at its best. They have been friends since they left the all new, all different Avengers and started the champions together. And that's an incredible uh, page of artwork there. Um, yeah, I'm loving the champions again. I, I was big on them when they started. 
kind of went in eh, after a while. When Jim Zub took over, it went back up, and this this new volume is really good. It's been a lot, by the way, two Wednesdays ago, one of the best new comic book days ever. If I didn't tell you that already, I'm telling you that now. Last one on my list is Batman 66. Um, this is, again, Batman's dreaming, and it's the question interviewing um, Catwoman over how she met Batman and why she left him and what was going on. And other than the fact that it's kind of like a cool episode getting issue, getting into Batman's psyche and some really great uh, double page spreads with rain, not much happens here. It's just really, I mean, Tom King is just showing the nightmare in, uh, in Batman's head and just how tortured he is. And he is absolutely freaking tortured. Um, but it wasn't a great issue. So, Pick of the week, drum roll. It was not Batman 66. It was an okay issue. We know that Batman's got a tortured psyche. Tom King tells it well with interesting perspectives. Wasn't great. Champions is right up there as one of my favorites of this week. Uh, Female Furies. Again, I'd say I'd put that right up there. Red Sonia was... Good is fun. It reminds me of reading the old Conan's um, powerful warrior who is not only powerful but outsmarts everybody. Die, just a phenomenal issue of almost like a breath between all the crazy stuff that happened in issue three. Deadly class, absolutely phenomenal. Um, wrap up to Saya's story and, and ending to Quan. Black Hammer 45, eh, is okay. Paper Girls. I'm still loving the overall concept. Didn't love this issue. Uh, so that leaves us with four that I really liked. And I guess four is the magic number because my pick of the week is die number four. And I'm not just saying that Pope. Pope is so mad when die three did not get pick of the week. Um, but die number four is pick of the week number eight. All right, guys. Um, I am going to start bagging and boarding and sorting because and packaging to mail. I got a bunch of stuff to mail off from the auction. Anybody who won something from me on Sunday on All About Comics legendary eight hour auction uh, that will ship out Wednesday. Anybody that owes stuff from Comic Con to that will ship out Wednesday. Uh, everything's going to ship out Wednesday. I just can't get it out sooner than that. Um, and yeah, that's it. I'm uh. I'm signing off. Thanks a lot for sticking around, guys. Take care.